Hi, my name is James, and today I'm going to show you how I painted this bird skull. Hey everyone, so this is my fifth installment of my watercolor art series. I'm super excited to be painting this painting today. It's a bird skull. I've been reading this book called Where the Crawdads Sing, and the main character, I think her name is Kia. I don't know really how to pronounce it, but um, I think it's Kia. Uh, she collects bird feathers and skulls and shells and everything that she finds in the swamp, and I was like, mm, you know, I really want to paint this skull. And I painted skulls in the past, and I really loved how they looked. I just like love painting the shadows and how uh, you can make something in death look so beautiful. So that's what I decided to paint today, and as always, I like to add my own little spin on things, so it's gonna be a galaxy skull. But really, the, the key to painting skulls is to paint all of the shadows and everything. You obviously want to have a really solid sketch at the beginning of the skull and where the holes are and all of the different grooves and notches, so that way you can, you can paint the shadows effectively. But if you paint it with a gray or, or a black color, like I'm, I'm using lamp black, you can even out the colors as they fade into the back of the skull. So I made sure to make the shadows on the back of the head portion of the skull so you can see where it's really dark. I'm trying to get that, that rounded effect. The light is gonna be hitting it from more of a diagonal angle. But I'm, I'm here just like adding cracks, grooves, making it look as realistic as possible, but also kind of adding this cartoony sort of effect as well. My personal favorite part of this painting is just painting the, the galaxy in the eyes. Really what you're gonna do for that is just paint a wet on wet or wet on dry. It really doesn't matter since it's such a small area. Of whatever bright color you want, I chose a purple and sort of pink. Then I outlined it all in black and made sure it, it blended well. I kind of wanted a darker galaxy, so that's why I went with this purple. And I extended that to all of the holes on the skull. And it ended up looking really well, and I let it dry. And while I was doing that, I thought that the painting <laughs> needed a little bit something more. Just felt a little empty, just being the skull. So I decided to add some flowers, and I'm by no means the best person for advice for painting flowers. So my flowers kind of turned out meh. Like not how, I don't love them, but you know, it's part of the process. I'm learning, you're learning, <laughs> we're all learning. Yeah, so the, the flowers didn't end up looking exactly how I wanted, but in the end, it, it all came together. Everything looked good. So <laughs> a little anecdote about my life is that when I was young and impressionable and in third grade, I was obsessed with being emo. Okay, did everybody hear that? Obsessed with being emo in third grade. I don't know why, just, I don't know. <laughs> Which uh, is so different from my personality now. I just, I don't know what was, what was up with me. When I was in third grade, I, I just, I was like, I want to be a Satanist, like, I would wear skull rings that I'd have my parents buy at Disneyland, and I just thought I was the coolest, <laughs> I was the shit, basically, of the third grade class, um, everyone wanted to be my friends, this is not true, <laughs> but somehow this was me in third grade, so different from the me that I was in high school four years ago which was this super peppy, obsessed kid with musicals, and I just loved being the most spirited. So there was an obvious shift in who I was and who I became. I think this was mostly because I was born in the month of October, and now that I think of it, it solidified my love of Halloween. I don't know about you other October babies out there, but Halloween is one of my favorite holidays. And I was just obsessed with the dark arts and everything. Halloween Town, watching that as a kid growing up. And then later when I was older, watching True Blood. Like, who wouldn't want to become a vampire and be obsessed with skulls and the emo lifestyle and be dark and mysterious and ominous? 
they, they just always seemed to have more fun in the TV shows and movies. And they had superpowers. Like, they get to live forever. They drink blood. Who, that's so cool. Like, what the heck? <laughs> I don't think blood would taste very good, though, so um, I would never do that. Um, I just want to put that out there. Would not drink blood. Um, that's in my Tinder profile as well. So, for all of you out there looking for a man, I'm here. <laughs> But for real though, if you know a guy who's like turning people into vampires, I still think it would be really cool to have fangs and be mysterious and stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to like, give a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, follow me on all of the things that are listed below, and I'll see you soon. Thanks.